Hi everyone, Gundafax here for 19th and brand new episode of our special edition Lore of the Universal Century. Today, we're going back to the late you see in an attempt to answer a particular question, which is... Yep, in this video, we're going to explore the history of everyone's favorite late you see bumblebee its mechanical lore, variants, and extract every bit of mechanical knowledge we have on them so far. But let's start by the beginning. What is exactly the Shock Hill? Codenamed ZMTS-12G, the Shock Hill, also called Shackle, was a multi-purpose prototype mobile suit created by Bespa early during the Zarska War. A test mobile suit created to pave the way to a next generation of Zarska suits, the Shock Air was a machine that was primarily designed to collect data and test technologies, and as such, many of its unique features reflected this status. First, the Shock Air mounted the usual Fox Eye camera sensors of all Zarska suits, but also integrated composite multi sensors in both eyes, a camera technology which enabled it to scan its surroundings and collect vital information instantly. Secondly, the Shock Air was designed to be extremely easy to pilot, and after a quick read of the manual, the test pilot could be able to run the machine and focus on gathering data for reports instead of struggling to move around the Shock Air. At last, the Shock Air integrated an emergency ejection system in its torso, which, unlike regular escape pods, would create a shaped explosion to propel the pod as far as possible from the danger zone. This feature was supposed to ensure the survival of the test pilot and the data in case the shock air suffered from critical malfunction or EV damage during battle. An ice on the cake, the ejection system could even work in 1G environments. Now, just because the shock air was a test machine, don't mean it wasn't battle capable. On the contrary, the suit was designed to collect data, yes, but also to verify design features and technologies Vespa planned to integrate in future mass production mobile suits, and this resulted in the shackle being a fearsome design. Basically, this suit was a drastic departure from early Zarska suits, emphasizing on close range combat without compromising mid range abilities, while being specially conceived to be able to neutralize as much as possible enemies' inbuilt weapons. To achieve this, the Shock Air made use of an asymmetrical shoulder design with the left shoulder mounting an additional heat vent and the right shoulder instead mounting a twin barrel beam gun. This weapon, concealed and revealed only in surprise attacks, could rotate by 360 degrees, and so it could be used to cover the blank spot of the shock KO. As a beam gun, this weapon was less powerful than most beam rifles, but it was nonetheless more powerful than the Zolo on beam rifle and was still effective in close range combat. Proportion wise, the shock air seemed to cruelly lag behind, with a max acceleration of barely 1.6 Gs, which was half of the max acceleration of the heavy gun, a 44 years old design at that time. However, this cruel lack of speed was actually intentional, as the shock air was meant to follow its own battle doctrine. Instead of prioritizing speed at all costs, this suit was actually designed to be extremely maneuverable and agile, which made it even more versatile and capable of performing admirably both in 0G and 1G environments alike. Proof of it can be seen in the Shockeo's own feet design, which doesn't mount real ankles and enable the Shockeo to transform its feet into a cruise form. This enabled the Shockeo to be able to rely on regular humanoid feet, vitals to stand correctly on the ground, while not being bothered by them when flying in the air or cruising in space, but still keeping the handbag advantage of them. All these things combined resulted in this mobile suit being an impressive design, far more performing than the Zolo. When the Shock Air was hijacked by Yuzue Win, all the Zarska soldiers who mistaken the Shock Air for nothing but a test suit would soon learn it wasn't the case, in the painful way. 
but that's enough specs for today. Let's get to our lore. The year is Universal Century 152. At that time, the expansionist Zaskar Empire had moved for war, supported by its manufacturer Bespa, short for Ballistic Equipment and Space Patrol Armory, formerly the scenery branches of Site 2. To compete with the more experienced and more numerous Federation forces, Bespa had relied on an approach of quality over quantity, and had started manufacturing the first generation of Zaskar suits, the Zoloat, for the Space Forces, and the Zolidia, then the Zolo, for the Ground Forces. This had worked tremendously well, and soon, the Federation forces were forced to retreat as Zaska gained more and more ground. Yet, shadowy days were starting for Zaskar. In fact, some resistant groups had emerged and had started manufacturing mobile suits on their own, which were sometimes on par if not blatantly superior to Zaskar first generation mobile suits. Among these was notably the League Militaire and his Gun Easy and Victory Gundam. With the technological gap between Zaskar and their enemies starting to reduce, Bespa engineers decided to shift to a new phase and considered that if the first generation was becoming obsolete, it was time to prepare for a second generation of Zaskar suits. However, manufacturing this new generation of mass production machines required preliminary work and a whole data collecting effort had to be done before any design was to be approved. This is why the Shocker was created in the first place, not only to collect data, but also to test some design features the engineers wanted to see implemented in the future generation of machines. After an intensive designing phase, the Shocker emerged as a unique machine, with notably its proto vifin and Bumblebee aspect being a stark departure from the earlier Zoloat series. Now, it is rumored that the strange form of the Shokeo and its Gundam-like appearance was due to some of its engineers having in the past participated in the creation of the Crossbone Gundam, and also it is plausible, since part of scenery became Vespa, it seems more of one of Asegawa's common retcons. Aside the features we discussed before, the engineers outfitted the Shocker with a prototype beam rifle, which would later be adopted by the Zolidia and a beam rotor. Funnily enough, the beam rotor was not one of the things the Shocker was meant to test, and against popular belief, the rotor was not even a primary feature of the Shocker design. Basically, if the Shocker had won in the series, it was because it participated in ground combat, but if it was to fight in space, the Shocker would likely have been shown with a regular beam shield. Completed in January UC-153, the Shocker started operation in February, where Lieutenant Chronicle Asher, brother of the Queen of Zarskar, was chosen as the test pilot and conducted various tests in space to collect data in Zero-G. In March, the Shocker descended on Earth and started a series of ground tests to collect the necessary data in the 1G environment. Stationed at the Lagern Airport near Prague, the Shokeo continued its mission until April, when the unsinkable happened. During a test flight near Wuwig, the Shokeo was hijacked and stolen by a young civilian named Uzo Ewen. Using the Shokeo, Uzo started retaliating against Lagern which led to the Shokeo proving itself as a deadly machine, despite being only considered a test shoot by Zaskar. This eventually led to a standoff, where Chronicle had to destroy the Shokeo, but where Uzo survived and joined the League Militaire, cementing his position as the Victory Gundam pilot. Following the Shokeo destruction, the wreckage of the suit and the data were collected by Zaskar, and quite ironically, Uzo hijacking provided the Shocker with the necessary data Bespa required, and now it could be mass produced. Yet, the data of the Shocker didn't reach the Mausoland immediately. Using it, Lagern engineers were able to finalize a prototype which was derived from the Shocker, the ZMTS-13G Godzorla. A prototype ground mobile suit. The Godzorla was a drastic departure from its predecessor, the Shokeo, retaining almost nothing of its external frame. Most notably, the Godzorla featured design features that Bespa had considered for the Shokeo, but dismissed, 
and which were now back in the Gotorla design. Among these was notably its head, which instead of relying on fox eye cameras, used multi-segmented lens, which resulted in more fragile but way more effective head sensors. Interestingly, the Gotorla was outfitted with the same beam rifle than the Shokel, but fitted way higher firepower due to more numerous inbuilt weapons, notably elf Vulcans and a pair of beam gun in the chest. As on the cake, the Godzorla beam rotor had been upgraded and fitted only three spinning blades instead of four, which was less energy hungry. This seemed to paint the Godzorla as a better choice than the Shokel to be mass produced. However, during its first sortie, the Godzorla was soundly defeated by the Victory Gundam, and the Langan staff, who observed the battle from afar, judged it wasn't an adequate design and decided to go for the Shokel. Nonetheless, the Godzorla was still put to limited production, with one such unit being seen in the Crossbone Ghost manga, being unceremonially sniped during the third battle of Jaburu. With the Shokyo having fulfilled its mission, Lagern sent back the data to the Marzoland inside too, and at last, the related mass production plan started. Now, the best by engineers of the Amelia Central facility were not exactly interested into mass producing the Shokel as it was. Instead of creating a lower performance mass production unit, they redesigned the Shokel frame to obtain a more cost efficient mobile suit with a performance superseding the one of the original prototype. This wasn't an easy task, but in May UC 153, the development team finally succeeded and presented the new mass production mobile suit, the DMS-22S Rick Shokeo. A general purpose mobile suit, the Rick Shokeo was a major improvement over its predecessor in literally every field. If a generator output improved by 770 kilowatts, the Rick Shokeo was able to power numerous beam weapons, among which were a custom beam rifle, a custom beam gun to use inside colonies, beam fans to use in handle combat, and three beam emitters, one in the head and one on each legs. Propulsion-wise, the Rick Shokeo gained a massive upgrade, with new subthrusters ensuring a max acceleration of 4.19 Gs, which was approximately 2.6 times higher than the Shokeo original max acceleration. When it came to the armoring, the Rick Shokeo also had classed its prototype, with its high titanium new ceramic composite armor, seeing its ratio of titanium being raised, resulting in higher defenses for the suit. Design-wise, the armor was optimized and incorporated harpoons to transport the weapons and slightly more altitude venues than the original design. This resulted in the Rick Shokeo being a total success and led to the approval of the model for mass production. The first unit produced would be assigned to Katejina Luz, and following this, the Rick Shokeo finally entered full-scale production soon reaching the status of bestseller among Zarskar suits. The Rick Shokel would form alongside the Contra the second generation of Zarskar machines and would fight as one of Zarskar's most reliable assets. Even more astonishing, the Rick Shokel managed to remain relevant even after the rollout of Zarskar's third generation of machines, the one using Einarats, and thus, the suit proved an even better success than expected. Soon, the Rick Shokel became one of Zarska's most widespread suits and was even favorited by some elite units, notably the Sunder Impulse Squad. During the Earth cleansing operation, it became common custom to replace the beam shield of the Rick Shokel with a beam rotor, and this eventually led to the creation of a grand specialized version of the Rick Shokel, the DMS-22G, aka the Rick Shokel beam rotor equipment type. As its name suggests, the beam rotor equipment type was not really different than these very basic Rick Shokeos equipped with a beam rotor, being just upgraded with a green lipin scheme which improved its camouflage on the ground. During the earth cleansing operation, these specialized Rick Shokeos would soon reach posterity, with their unknowing beam rotor assisted jumps gaining them the moniker of Grasshoppers. Yet, the beam rotor equipment type wouldn't be the most significant upgrade the Rick Shocker would receive. Because of the Rick Shocker performance, 
it was chosen to be modified for the use of Zarska Imperial Guard, aka the envoys, the sworn bodyguards of Queen Maria. This resulted in an upgraded version of the Shokkei line, the ZMS-22SC Rik Shokkei Kai, also known as the Rik Shokkei for Imperial Guard. Almost identical to the regular Rik Shokkei, the Imperial Guard version on its significant upgrade came through the renewal of both the shoulders. The right shoulder received a metallic whip, which could be used as a close-range grappling weapon or be spin to deflect beam attacks. The left shoulder was instead a composite weapon, combining offensive and defensive assets mounting a physical shield, a beam shield and two inbuilt beam guns. In episode 44 of Victory Gundam, the wet arc attempt to sneak into the Angel Halo was foiled after Queen Maria detected the presence of her daughter Shakti aboard the ship and dispatched the Imperial Guard to investigate. On board the specialized Rickshockeus, the envoys caught the White Ark, but were ambushed and one of their Rickshockeus was captured by the White Ark. After attempting to flee, the pilot named Kishaw was hunted down by his lover Karinga, who saw the League Militaire had hijacked the Rickshockeus after killing Kishaw. This led to a tragic standoff where Karinga only realized it was a lover all along, once it was too late, which resulted in both killing each other in a last embrace. This would be the last breath of the Shockey line, ending the story of the Bumblebee mobile suit with a Romeo and Juliet sad tone. Now remember, a V Gundam stands for a Vespa Gundam, absolutely not Victory Gundam. Guess who was secretly the main mech all along? Of course, the Shokkeo. And we have now completed today's topic, and I hope you will like it. This will be all for today's video, but stay tuned for future lore content delivered on the same channel. Hit the like button, and most importantly, comment and subscribe as it will really help the channel to flourish. So long for the new times, until the time for next special edition.